good day. I'm Carleen Brown Thompson and this is your JIS News for June 11. The Ministry of Labor and Social Security says it is not easing up on efforts to end child labor in the country. Director of the Child Labor Unit in the Ministry, Marva Ziminis, says the unit is exploring a number of avenues to sensitize the public about the effects of child labor and how it infringes on the human rights and social justice of children. While we're not targeting, as we said, all work that is done by children for elimination. We definitely are targeting the worst forms of child labor and those are targeted for immediate elimination. Project officer for the International Labor Organization Tackle Project, Nasolo Thompson, lauded the various legislations and entities set up by the government to address child labor. She says Jamaica leads the region in this regard. And Jamaica has been a, a, a strong advocate in the international um, arena for these issues related to child labor and human rights. The Senate has approved a motion calling on the government to undertake a structured program of improvement to the indigenous housing stock using skilled and unskilled workers under the Jamaica Emergency Employment Program Jeep. Opposition Senator Robert Montague, who brought the motion, argued that the registered poor or indigent represented the poorest of the poor in the country and their housing needs had to be urgently addressed. I am making an appeal that a part of the CDF coupled with the G program be combined to solve this problem. Construction clinics can be set up in communities and the persons trained and certified by heart NTA and they could be used to effect the repairs to the homes of the indigents. As we go forward to implement this resolution, I am making a special appeal and support of the resolution to make sure that we get the requisite housing stock so that these individuals can be placed in homes that they will be able to live a dignified life. The Bustamante Hospital for Children has a new blood gas analyzer machine which should boost the services provided by the hospital's pediatric cardiac surgery unit. The unit attends to babies and young children suffering from congenital heart disease in Jamaica and the wider Caribbean. A blood gas analyzer is used in surgeries and the intensive care unit and provides information about oxygen, carbon dioxide, pH levels, electrolytes, metabolites and oximetry. The machine was donated to the hospital by the Kingston Rotary Club and some of its sister chapters. Valued at 62,000 US dollars, the new machine replaces an older version that was being leased by the hospital. Several blood drives have been organized for this week, leading up to the June 14 observation of World Blood Donor Day under the theme, Every Blood Donor is a Hero. As Jamaica prepares to commemorate the day, Director of the National Blood Transfusion Service, Dr. Angela Scott, is urging more persons to become voluntary donors. Speaking at a recent JIS think tank, she stressed that voluntary donation, which only makes up about 15% of annual donations, is the source of the safest blood. Dr. Scott says while the country needed 55,000 units of blood each year, the blood bank collected just under 30,000 units last year. If 20 thousand Jamaicans will commit to donating three times per year, we will exceed the national target and also meet the World Health Organization objective of having 100% voluntary donors. The week of activities to celebrate World Blood Donor Day got off the ground on Sunday with a church service and the first blood drive. Others are planned for each day this week. The goal is to collect at least 500 units of blood from qualified participating donors. And finally, Tourism and Entertainment Minister Dr. Wickham McNeil is representing Jamaica's interests at the 93rd session of the Executive Council of the United Nations World Tourism Organization, UNWTO. Jamaica is one of the two vice chairs for the council. The meeting is being held in Madrid, Spain from June 11 to 13, where the council is considering a white paper called a reform process for a more relevant UNWTO. The paper is intended to be the main strategic guiding document to make the UNWTO 
WTO more relevant and efficient in addressing current and future tourism and global development challenges. And that's it for the JIS News today. I am Carleen Brown Thompson. Thanks for watching.